Life on Earth has been cancelled in order that we may bring you the following bleak look at the future. <laughs> Today's video takes us all the way back to August 15th, 1992. This is where we once again discuss a woman named Geraldine Laybourne, the then president of Nickelodeon Programming. If that name sounds familiar and you're a fan of my channel, that's because she was responsible for the creation of Nick at Night, as I covered that topic in Lesson N101, Nick at Night, Nickelodeon After Dark. So I guess we've come full circle. So one day, Geraldine realized that there was a shortage of shows for people that were old enough to stay up past 8 p.m. and too young to be out that late on Saturday nights. So she quickly came up with a plan to alleviate this problem and give me a topic for today's video. Hey, hey, everybody, what's up, and welcome back to Macabgorium Labs Presents School of Boredom, a showcase of things likely forgotten. I'm your host, Bats, and I hope you'll join me today as we take a look at our season finale with Lesson N113, Snick, Nick at Night on Saturdays, rebranded. <laughs> We already discussed how this all started with an orange couch, or more accurately, THE orange couch. What we haven't talked about is who, what, why, and how. So Snick, or Saturday Night Nick, was a two-hour programming block that took place on Saturday nights. It would run from 8 p.m. until 10, or at times 10.30 p.m. It was designed for a slightly older audience with more mature comedy, more sensitive topics, and it was basically Nickelodeon understanding that its audience was growing up and the network needed to grow along with it. It would all start with an orange couch, a girl explaining life, a group of talented and funny people, a cat and a dog, and some campfire ghost stories. And that's because the first airing of Snick would see two Nickelodeon favorites being moved from Sundays as well well as two all-new shows made specifically for the lineup. Let's talk about the programs that made SNCC, and while I have talked about some of these in the past, I will be talking about the rest later down the line. For now though, the first shows ever to air on the SNCC block were Clarissa Explains It All. This was a teen sitcom show about a teenage girl that broke the fourth wall where the titular character Clarissa would discuss how she would deal with the tropes of being a 1990s teenager. The premiere of Nickelodeon's Roundhouse. I have discussed this one already, but it was a teen sketch comedy show that also dealt with some rather serious issues and at times complexities of growing up. Link below to my video about Nickelodeon's Roundhouse. The iconic Ren and Stimpy Show. I'm pretty sure this show needs no introduction. However, for the few that may not know, the Ren and Stimpy Show was a cartoon about a hot-tempered and psychotic asthma hound chihuahua named Ren and a goofy, simple-minded red cat named Stimpy. It was styled somewhat like an old Saturday morning cartoon, only it was grosser, more mature, and full of humor that, let's say, most of us wouldn't get until we were adults. And the premiere of the insanely super popular Are You Afraid of the Dark? Are You Afraid of the Dark was a teen horror anthology series where a group of teenagers would meet at a secret place to tell ghost stories as members of a secret ghost story club called the Midnight Society. And fans of this one will tell you that some of these stories were downright scary as hell. It would be these four shows that would start the legacy of Smick. And throughout its time, its legacy would expand through several other shows, including the creation of two more SNCC originals, one of which was The Secret World of Alex Mack. This was a teen dramedy about a teenage girl named Alex that accidentally had chemicals spilled on her that gave her special abilities, with powers like the ability to turn into a liquid form or light up when experiencing strong emotions. She must live her life in secret, and of course the owner of said chemicals wants to find Alex to figure out the secrets behind this mutation. So naturally, hijinks ensue. 
And the last show created specifically for the SNCC block comes with a bit of a caveat, and that show was the iconic All That. Created by one of the most prominent show creators the network had ever seen, All That was basically a kid-friendly version of Saturday Night Live. All That would feature kids of varying ages performing in comedy sketches, most of which were funny. And no, even though the story behind this iconic program is really dark, with very disturbing lineage, we aren't going to discuss that here. But I have a comment on what happened closer toward the wrap-up of this video. And also, while all that would launch the careers of several well-known Nickelodeon celebrities, its legacy would be left nothing short of tarnished. Moving on, SNCC would play host to several other Nickelodeon favorites, like the adventures of Pete and Pete. It was the story of a superhero and a kid who ruled at dodgeball, waltzed the lunar landscape, and beat up the Atlantic Ocean. Space Cases <laughs> Keenan and Kel Kel, do you know that last month you drank over $100 worth of free orange soda? Really? I thought it was so much more. The Mystery Files of Shelby Wu Hi, Shelby Wu here with a handy little mystery for you to solve. Kablam Speaking of choking... June, look! See? I told you it's a birthday cake. Get a grip, Henry. Rugrat. I can't look! Aw, oh, this is nothing. He's been in worse trouble than this. What's he got his tongue stuck to an ice cube? Wow. The Journey of Alan Strange. This is my big sister, Robbie. Hi. We live with our dad over there. And this is Alan. Hello. Uh, he lives up there. Animorphs. I, I have an announcement for everybody. I've learned that the real world is far more interesting than television could ever be, so... The Amanda Show. My name's Courtney. Great! <laughs> 100 Deeds for Eddie McDowd. I'm so full of history I could burst, huh? You're full of something, all right. Noah Knows Best. Well, I see that invisibility potion I took worked. Caitlin's Way. It's weird. Somebody somewhere spent a lot of time designing something only to have it ripped open and become garbage. SpongeBob SquarePants. How many times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? All grown up. All those unethical business practices. Those shady backdoor deals I did. I know where the bodies are buried. <sighs> Romeo. So, this is what we've come to. Playing empty middle school lunchrooms. What's the next stop? Gas station restrooms? Cousin Skeeter. What have I done? I'm not sure, but from here, it looks like you completely ignored the instruction manual. I gotta get out! I gotta get out! And the Nick Cannon Show. Nick, we're really bored here. Really? And while SNCC gave a new audience to those shows, in 1999, SNCC would come to an end. Well, sort of, because it would be rebranded as SNCC House. SNCC House was a block hosted by Nick Cannon that would feature a special guest each week, usually some sort of famous person or musician, and this would be brought to a close and brought back to a rebooted SNCC in just under one year in the year 2000. Then came the fateful date of September 2002, where Nickelodeon would task their golden boy with creating a new segment for the block with the SNCC on air dares. I'm not going to get into all the things that happened during this time period, I'm gonna save that for later, but I will talk about it at some point somewhere. However, I will say that the on-air dares were exactly that. The cast members of shows would perform dares, to put it loosely. Live on-air during SNCC, most of which were less than wholesome. SNCC would see its final interpretations later on with episodes and full lineups on the splats, the 90s are all that block. All in all, SNCC was a staple for a lot of kids' and teens' lives, especially in the 1990s. It was television, just for us kids and young adults, and it would be fondly remembered by many. And now we're going to try a new School of Boredom segment called Bat's Final Thoughts, title subject to be changed.
I remember when SNCC first aired. It was a new and exciting time. As kids, we had no idea what was going on behind the scenes, and a ton of us kids dreamed of being a Nickelodeon star. I guess the majority of us dodged a bullet. And while I will not get into the dark side of what happened here in this video, I do have some thoughts. I see a ton of people boycotting the network in its entirety, and I don't feel like that's entirely fair. We all know the problems with the creator of Ren and Stimpy, and as of 2024, we have new insights on the behind the scenes at Nickelodeon's best program. However, a majority of these shows, especially the earlier live action and animated shows, did not suffer through the same tragedies that the more prominent ones did. And for the most part, these shows were not the center of controversy. And speaking of those shows from the Schneider era, I actually have a couple thoughts. A moment ago, I mentioned that fans of the network have started turning their backs to Nickelodeon, and I honestly can't understand why. I see a lot of Dan is scum and I cannot support such a rotten person, and while I agree, I have to ask you, if you ignore the work these kids put into these shows, does that not mean they suffered for nothing? It means that the horrible treatments and bad situations they found themselves in ultimately amounted to nothing. It's true what they say, artists suffer for their work, and in this case, more than anybody ever should have. But by not enjoying programs you used to enjoy, you are effectively saying, Oh, I'm sorry you suffered. That's horrible. I used to love your show. But here, I'm going to support you by getting your life's work cancelled so nobody will ever see it again. My point is, yes, these shows have more than a problematic and disgraceful history. But at the time that they came out, we enjoyed them, we learned from them, and we grew with them. And yes, you could also argue that it's not the kids that created the show. But then, some of the crew members of these shows were treated just as badly. So in short, I agree, some of the people running and even working on these shows were not great and even horrible people, but it was the talented kids and other crew members that suffered to create something you at one point truly enjoyed. So I say don't discredit the actors or the writers, honor them, do not let the work they suffered through mean nothing. And we had a ton of fun this season. We discussed some really cool Nickelodeon topics from the origin of Green Slime and why Nickelodeon chose the color orange to legacy products like the Nickelodeon Blaster series and GAC. We even got to talk about some of the original shows that made the first kids network awesome. Like you can't do that on television, what would you do? And hey dude. And I will be covering a ton more. And some of the coolest stuff to come from the network. And that will be whenever I get to Nickelodeon Season 2. But now you know what I think? I've just gotta ask. Did you ever enjoy SNCC? Do you have any favorite SNCC moments or shows? What were some of your favorite moments from School of Boredom Nickelodeon Edition Season 1? Have any comments or fun facts? Maybe I forgot something or maybe you have a suggestion for a future video or just want to drop in and say hi. Either way, I look forward to hearing from you. One last note. Isn't it funny that right about the time Nickelodeon would find its biggest success, we would see the entrance of Boomerang and Cartoon Network? And with that, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our School of Boredom Nickelodeon Edition Season 1 finale. I've been your host, Bats, and I hope you had fun today as we talked about Lesson N-113, SNCC, Nick at Night Saturdays, Rebooted. Be sure to check back next time because you never know what we have in store, and as usual, Think for yourselves, be excellent to each other, and of course, keep it creepy. I think we know what's coming next. Probably a little black and white. Nick, 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 Nick. Nickelodeon! Hey, thanks for checking out our video. If you enjoyed this one and would like to see more of our weird, creepy, odd, eccentric, or strange content as soon as it comes out, please feel free to click like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more. We'll see you later. Keep it creepy.